Okay. Well, welcome to this hearing of the Local Historic District Commission. Uh, the purpose of our commission is to aid property owners in the town in preserving and protecting the distinctive characteristics, characteristics and architecture of the buildings and places significant to the history of our town. Pursuant to chapter 20 of the Acts of 2021, extended by chapter two of the Acts of 2023, this meeting will be conducted by a remote means. Members of the public who wish to access the meeting may do so via Zoom or by telephone. No in-person attendance of members of the public will be permitted, but every effort will be made to ensure that the public can adequately access the proceedings in real time via technological means. A hyperlink to the hearing will be posted on the town's online calendar. We're here to talk about four uh, certificates that have been requested. And those are uh, 38 Gray Street, 17 Seeley Street, 216 Lincoln Avenue, and 47 to 49 Fearing Street. So we'll start with the 38 Gray Street, uh, 14B to 18 Grace Electrical Services. Is anyone here from the audience who is here to speak to this? If so, you could raise your hand. see any hands i know the electrician had emailed last week and asked if they could, if they could attend in person and i said no it's it's uh through zoom um i thought they were going to try to attend but i don't see anyone here yet well this seems fairly straightforward this is a request to install eight driveway lights meter box and associated improvements mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, based on what they submitted, the lights are only about a foot tall and you know, they'll be equally spaced along the length of the driveway. The only you know question I had was, you know, a, a meter box, like how big and you know, is it is it something that's gonna be too visible? Um other than that, it seems pretty straightforward. Have they include included the meter box in their designs? No, and then I wasn't clear. Any diagrams, visuals? <laughs> there wasn't a lot. Um, I can share my screen in a minute. And while you're getting up, the, the question would be about the meter box. It sounds that you would have a meter box if it was a whole separate service. Is this a separate service or is it part of an existing service? In which case you would thought it would be a circuit offer panel board for a meter that was already installed as far as the building is concerned. Yeah. I, I was, no. Though my only question was that on the diagram the electrician uh, provided, it just said 200 amp meter, you know, next to the lights. And so it wasn't clear if it was a new box or if it was something that was being, you know, if it was our existing. And so that's, that hasn't been that hadn't been clarified. Did you ask him to clarify that? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yep. Yes, we could. Uh, well, so the, the lights, how many of them are there? And uh, I, I confess I looked at this a while back. I was going to do it over the weekend, but I was uh, laid low over the weekend. So that didn't happen. Yeah, I mean, there's only eight lights and they're not, like I said, they're only about a foot tall. And so it yeah, was they're interesting. Probably, they're probably, what, 10 watt lights. So there's less than a hundred kilo, a uh, hundred watts of of lighting. Yeah, so it looks like maybe the meter is already there um, and they're just gonna tie into it. So the, I, um, you know, they're hardwired. But... I would, uh, to, to the extent that we, we, uh, move and grant a certificate of appropriateness, I would uh, do it for the lights and uh, state the assumption being, as you say, eight. Right, yeah, so here's, if this is visible, here's the Google Street View from 2019, here's the meter. So this is what he showed in the diagram was a meter here. Um, and I just wasn't sure if they were gonna do anything with it. You know, so the idea is to have draw lights along the, you know, the, the one side of the driveway. Okay. And the roadway is up there where the yellow sign is? The, sorry, the what is up there? 
the road. The house is behind us. The right. Road, yes. Yeah. So it's, it's a long driveway, and the house is behind. Yep. Mm -hmm. It is a very strange place to have a meter. That seems strange. Uh, but yeah. it's already there, right? So it, it is. It's already there. Yeah. So it must have been when the house was renovated. You know, in the late or the two, mid two thousand teens, they put. They must have put the box there. That's. I've never seen that. I mean, even temporary services don't usually get installed like that. Uh, okay. And there's no suggestion of what the associated improvements would be? Yeah, so the, the lights are, these are the lights. So, I mean, all, all it was was a straight electrical permit. There's no building permit or other permits associated with it. The idea is to install these along the driveway. And as best I can tell, they're, you know, 11 and a half inches tall and... Uh, you know, pretty innocuous, but because, you know, our bylaw does require review of lighting, it doesn't differentiate between this type of lighting or lighting on a building. And so, you know, it, this, you know, went through a review, it needs to go through a review. Beautiful lights, I think. It's downcast. Mm -hmm. I, uh, that seems, seems fine to me. Yeah, I agree. Seems like a reasonable request. Does anybody have any objections to this or concerns? No, I think they're they're beautiful. Uh, shall I move to ground the certificate of appropriateness? Do we, uh, thank you. Do we do we have a second? A second. Well, uh, uh, but, but, but do we have to also tie in? Uh, we we've opened a public hearing, right? So we have to. Yes. Do and and does anybody in the audience want to comment? Do we think? I guess the answer is probably no because no one stuck their hand up earlier. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so move to uh, uh, move to grant a certificate of appropriateness uh, for the proposed uh, driveway light installation at insert the address, finding that the uh, application is consistent with uh, sections eight and those. I used to have a, a a whole spiel that I read out, but uh, do you want me to go? Do you want me to pull pull my standard spiel up, uh, Nate? Or you can basically we have to logic appropriately we have to tie it to the two sections. I think that right. find that it's uh, it's not injurious to the uh, the Dickinson uh, 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 sorry the uh, Lincoln Sunset Historic District. So if you can uh, construct this one's in that, the bench, that and then to close mm -hmm. the public hearing, that would be the motion. Uh, is there any further discussion? No. Uh, shall we move to a vote? Uh, Bruce? Yes. Steve? Yes. Nicole? Yes. Frida? Yes. Karen? Yes. And I agree also. So uh, I think that's sufficient to grant uh, the certificate for this change. Uh, the next item is 17 Seeley Street, 14B32, First Congregational Church. This is a request to install outdoor HVAC unit on the back west side of the house, elevated above ground. Do we have anybody here from representing them? We do. I'll make them a panelist. What's the address again? 17 Seely. So this it's the uh, First Congregational Church. Uh, John, do you have things you would like to say about this? Hi. Yes. Hi. Um, we had a um, frozen pipe at uh, Jesse's house, which is a shelter. It's the old parsonage for the um, first congregational church on Main Street. And um, it turns out the pipe froze because there was an old gas through the wall heater there that was not functioning anymore. I'm on the property team and 
was unaware that this was not functioning. No one from Jesse's house let us know, but um, we got the plumbing fixed and uh, talked to a HVAC guy. And he said, look at the, the easiest thing to do here is to put a mini split to handle this room. Um, and uh, that was applied for by an electrician. And that's, I think, what triggered the review. Uh, there was no building permit required. So it wasn't obvious to me that it got a historical review, but here I've learned something. Yes, anything on the outside of this building. So it is in place. I think Nate has um, a picture of it that he could put up. Yeah, so doing that. Uh, you're here. You're not here in your capacity as a part of the the uh, inspection staff. I gather. I'm not here as a building inspector. No. Right. So, so yeah, in the packet I posted, you know, here's here's you know older street view. Here's the back of the house. You know, there's somewhere the cursor is. There's some uh, a box on the back of the house, just above can, the brick. You can see next to the right of the to the door there. There's a that's the old exhaust for the gas heater. So. Yeah, right here and then so what's there now is a plate, and then the unit is installed just underneath the, the I had the electricians hold it up off the ground because there's a sandbox there that the Spring Street Nursery um, the kids play in I didn't I didn't want to anybody sticking a finger or a stick into that um, mini split unit and uh, Nate the reason that we're doing this as opposed to just uh, it being uh, I mean, we've given some thought to these units and yeah. we've, uh, we've right we've excluded we have excluded the installation of these um but we limit that they can only be a you know four feet off the ground and so because this one is elevated it requires review so if this were you know placed on the ground and it met the conditions we have then it would be you know it would have been excluded from review but because it's elevated it triggers this yeah. And John, the uh, size of the unit will be what approximately twice or three times, maybe four times the size of this unit that's currently there. No, this is it, Bruce. The picture right here. Oh, is the oh. unit. So, oh, so we're we're re we're operating retroactively. Correct. Right. Okay. <laughs> it seems to me you've given a very good reason for raising it higher. I'm willing to support this. Yeah, I mean, well, here's here's what I learned too, and I kind of knew this, but um, in Massachusetts, you can apply for an electrical permit, and you can begin work, and as long as all your applications complete, then you know you have there's you know a period where an electrician can begin work before they can actually get their permit, and so with these um, mini split units and some other electrical work that often happens, an electrician is, you know submits their permit, all their insurance, whatever requirements workers comp and then they can actually begin work and then within five days the town has to review it and have some comments but essentially they could go in there in one day do this work and then you know we're still chasing it that's exactly what happened okay so theoretically we could uh, we could refuse to grant a certificate of appropriateness and they would have to be taken down or something like that or screened or something right but uh, that's certainly not my intention i think it's uh this is visible from the public yeah, way or we wouldn't be here. Is that correct? Right. So I can go back. Um, sorry, I'm on. I'll go back to the. You can't see it from there. If, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so the the back of the house is here where the cursor is, and it's visible from you know the corner of Spring and uh, Church Churchill. So somewhere in you know back here by the parking lot, across the parking lot, it's visible. So it's you know pretty far away. It is it's pretty okay. well hidden, right? Yeah. I, uh, I'm, I'm fully comfortable with this. Uh, do I have a uh, move to motion to approve this? Uh, I motion to approve it. Second. I'll second that. Thank you. Uh, any further discussion? Uh, I think we can move to a vote then. Uh, Karin. I. Frida? Yes. Steve? Yes. Bruce? Yes. Nicole? Yes. And I also do. So I, uh, we will grant you your certificate of appropriateness. Thank you for coming, John. Excellent. Thank you. Thanks, John.
The third item is uh, 216 Lincoln Avenue. Uh, this is uh, from Marnie Electric Inc. And this is a request to install a generator, propane tanks and equipment on the north side of the house. Uh, Nate, do you have a picture for us? Sure, I was gonna ask if there's anyone here. I know that someone was thinking about coming. Um, I know there's still someone in the audience. Is there an attendee here to speak to this? Yes. Okay. You'll be asked to um, become a panelist and you can accept that. Uh, do you have a presentation you'd like to make, uh, Mr. Jensen? Hello. Can you hear me now? Yes. Okay. Um, I had submitted uh, a, a number of attachments that I think uh, Mr. Malloy should have to share. Mm -hmm. Yeah, if that's visible for everyone, this is a, a site plan. Um, one dimension on there not shown is from the, the public way, the street to the generator position. It's, it's quite far. It's 75 feet, I would say, approximately. Mm -hmm. The propane tanks are going on the rear of the home on that corner. Um, so they're, they're, they're be at the back side of the home. Um, yeah. And then for, furthermore, I understand that, could you bring up the, uh, the, 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 the street, current street view? Thank you. So this is the north side of the house. Um, obviously, as I understand it, vegetation isn't to be considered, but these are uh, antique perennial rhododendrons that I would, I would care to guess no one in their right mind would cut down. Um, and you can see the distance, you know, to the, the, the far back corner of the home there. Yeah, I think there's one other image showing what a generator looks like so, about, about so, 50 feet. Yeah. Yeah, that's approximately at 50 feet. And that's the side of the generator. If all of that vegetation were to be cut down, add 25 feet to that visual and you would be seeing the side panel of the generator which is about 30 inches tall by 24 inches wide uh, beige in color it's the exact same make and model so it'd be that color um, i know that it really doesn't have a bearing on 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 this consideration 216 Lincoln, but this is directly across the street from 216 Lincoln. This is 209 Lincoln. Okay, it's hard to see. Here, I, I can um, zoom in here a little bit, but yeah, I mean, it's. What's the, uh, what's the white thing that's vertical above it? Back here? Yes, that. that that's, a, that's a porch. That's just a you know, at the corner, at the far back corner of the house, there's, this is the porch and then there's a post. Oh, I see. So, yeah. that, so but, but this is the house across the street. This is not yes, this, the house this, that's in yes. question. Correct. Okay. This is an example of what the generator would look like with, you know, free line of sight if all that vegetation at 216 wasn't there. Yeah. Uh, at 50 feet, uh, the 216 generator is actually 75 feet set back from the road. Yes. I mean, it seems to me it's going to be quite well hidden. Yes, I think the, the problem with this, if it's a problem at all, would be much more likely to be noise for the neighbors rather than uh, the view from the street for the, uh, the bulk of the neighborhood. Uh, uh, it's not our purview, uh, but uh, do you happen to know the decibel rating of this thing? Yes, I provided a... Uh equipment cut sheet for the generator and we can go down to the specifications area 
All right. And here are the sound. Is that 57 dB? Yes. Oh, that's uh, that's about the noise level of a of a heat pump water heater, almost exactly a quiet one. Actually, it's quite they're well. These so, generac generators are you know and <clears throat> they're competing against competitors in the quiet war we call it <laughs> because well, that, everyone that, wants a quiet generator. As I say, it's not our purview, but if it was, I would uh, be satisfied on behalf of whatever neighborhood concern I might have, I think. Thank you for that. That's yes, yes, useful to know. Are there any other questions for Mr. Jensen? Uh, do we have a motion to uh, accept this and provide a, a certificate of appropriateness? I'll move to uh, grant a certificate of appropriateness uh, to the uh, post installation of the generator at uh, 216 Lincoln, uh, finding it uh, not inconsistent with uh, the historic uh, integrity of the neighborhood and the Lincoln subset. Do we have a second? I'll second it. Thank you. Uh, any further discussion? Well, let's move to the vote then. Uh, Nicole. Yes. Bruce. Yes. Steve. Yes. Karen. Yes. Agreda. And I also approve it. So uh, we are prepared to grant the certificate of appropriateness. Uh, thank you for your presentation. Thank so now you. We're ready, to, we're ready to move to the fourth uh, and item, and this is 47 to 49 Fearing Street. Uh, request to remove the existing concrete front stairs and replace them with new wood frame stairs with new decking and handrails. Do we have somebody from uh, this request? It doesn't look that way, but we could ask if there's anyone here for this project, please raise your hand. I, I went by there today. And, uh... The concrete steps are actually in really terrible condition, so this is absolutely an improvement. That's what I thought too. Yeah, yeah, I, mean, yeah I can. I'll share my screen. I, I know the contractor. I mean, everyone was made aware of this. I thought again that they were would attend. Um, let's see, here is the existing okay. conditions. So you know, and it, it looks as if these aren't original, um, just based on the way this is right. framed uh, up. Oh, yes. And so the um, the plan was to this is a picture you know not not that not this property but to make it look something similar in terms of um, you know wooden you know wooden or or a synthetic material but stairs with railings and decking and so here's the framing plan plan shows this um, so uh, you know Trex decking and then so a, it wouldn't you know, be the same configuration of facing out which I also think is an improvement. Oh, no, so this is this is just showing a side view. So I actually think it would it would look very similar to this. It would just come straight out off the porch. Okay, because right now it comes out, it's not right. straight out. Whoops. Yeah, yeah, no, it would, yeah. My understanding is that it would just come, you know, straight down. Straight down. Yeah, that's much better. Yeah. So it wouldn't come between the two columns. It would uh, the the half column would be the uh, the extent, presumably. Right, right here it'd still be the I would uh, I would speak to matching the uh, the material and profile of this of the of the porch railing in the stair railing. I think uh, using treks for the uh, railing and the post would be uh, quite awful. I mean, I, I, that would be very difficult to do. Trex is not a material that you use for fine woodworking. Or for even uh, you know reasonable uh, exterior finished carpentry, and uh, it's rough. Uh, it would be hard to do. It wouldn't last long because you couldn't get uh, decent uh, fixings. Uh, you, you the attachments into this plastic uh, Trex system would be. Uh, it's well, it does say Trex rail system. I don't know what that means actually. Yeah, I was just gonna... what that looks like. Well, let's see what the uh, 
no they didn't provide those that that level of detail yeah well is... uh thanks okay hmm. i mean it could be that it you know it's something like something like so it's it's a you know that it has a whole kit to it so it's not you know you're not you know you're not actually putting the you know well i think this is too speculative i think they should come back and tell us what they're going to do yes i think we i agree yeah. steve i think we should yeah. encourage people to take this seriously and just because we've been quick on the last three years because we had uh, information that was uh, complete essentially yeah, no, this has happened before where we ask someone to come back and they, you know, we say, well, specify, tell us, is it this Trex select? Is it this, you know, Trex transcend and give us a, a little bit more detail so that we can understand what it'll look like? Yes. I, 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 would, I would also like, um, you know, for, for the photos to be together as to how much they complement what is on the porch, kind of what Bruce was alluding, alluding to, because just putting treks in for those stairs if they already have to paint the porch they're not saving themselves on maintenance costs or anything like that it's pretty small compared to the amount they'd have to be painting on the porch and things like that for regular maintenance so it doesn't make sense to kind of be introducing that other material i agree so i i, I think we should encourage we should ask them to come back with more detail and i think we should as nicole just said encourage them to consider um uh um, matching the existing balustrading of the porch for the uh, railings of the steps and uh, but at very least uh, telling us which which uh, trek system they propose but if if they want to if they want to receive a fully favorable uh, reception here Nate, maybe you could suggest that uh, matching the porch would be uh, the way to go i mean maybe that's a motion I mean, yeah, we could. I'm just doing the date and time. We have, um, let's see. We have to continue this hearing to do this? We could continue it or issue it with conditions. OK, well. And we'd have, you know, we have until September to actually issue a certificate. So, you know, we have to open the hearing within 45 days which we've done and then we have 60 days from the time of a complete application so honestly we 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 i got this moving knowing they submitted an application but it wasn't considered complete until pretty recently so we have time if we wanted to continue it or we could the commission could issue a um, i would prefer to continue it so we can make sure that it opens out and it matches because it's pretty prominent um on that street it would make a big difference yes well, i'd like I to think... have these people take us more seriously Yes, agree with I, that. I agree. So, do we have a motion to uh, continue this? I'll do sure. the honors this time. I, I make a motion to continue the hearing on this property. Do we have a? We should. We have to continue to a, a date and time certain. Okay. So we need a, a date in September. Is that right? Or I mean, August. I would say August. Like, what do we do? Like the week of August. Um, we can do like August seventh or fourteenth. I mean, something like that. We'll give up. I I will be out of town both of those days. And I'll be out of town all the days following. Well, actually, no. I'll be out of town from the end of that week, from the from the seventeenth onwards. Uh, but. I mean, yeah, I mean, it doesn't have to be the 14th. It could be a Tuesday, Nancy. I don't know if you're on vacation during the... I, I, I'm away until the... Uh, I'm flying back on the 15th, so I, I can't do anything before the 16th. Mm -hmm. And I'm gone that same time that Nancy's gone. Well, I don't have to be there. I mean, I'll be uh, in France or somewhere. It seems that oh. Aaron doesn't <laughs> have much trouble phoning in. <laughs> But uh, yeah. she might uh, she might be cleverer than me. I think there's a very good <laughs> chance that that's true. <laughs> Just get out of that. What about the week of August twenty first? I'm around. I'm around. I'm around too. Yeah, I, I am too. Do it. 
Are you around, Nate? Yeah, I think so. I mean, I can be around. OK. This could also, you know, this would work if we did it then in case we had other applications come in, could, you know, we could have this as a continued hearing, could have a regular meeting, and if there's another project to review, it gives us enough time to get a legal add in. Okay. So let's continue it to uh, August 21st. Uh, 3 p.m., is that? Yep. Uh, do I have a second for that motion? A second. Uh, uh, any further discussion? Uh, let's move to a vote. Uh, Greta? Yes, I agree. Karen? Yes. Steve? Yes. Bruce? Yes. And Nicole? Yes. Thank you. And I also agree. So uh, we will move to uh, continue this on August. 21st at 3 p.m. Uh, that takes us through our initial um, issues. Uh, and so now we're ready for uh, the rest of our agenda, which begins with uh, the discussion of East Amherst as a potential historic district. So this is our opportunity to talk about that further. Um, I have a bunch to report. Um, first of all, in terms of financing, I reached out to, to um, first of all, I tried to, I reached out to Steve Schreiber at UMass and a number of other professors about interns. And Steve said that they'd only do it if we pay. And uh, of course we can't get a CPA grant until next August. I wrote to Paul Bockelman and I asked him if he could come up with like $3,000 or something like that. And he actually told me to refer it to uh, Nate in the planning department to see if they could come up with anything. So the, to Nate, that's their ballpark. In the meantime, um, I've actually transcribed about a third of the um, Form Bs from the existing research that we have. And some of them are like actually done. Uh, you know, in 2014, uh, Nate, maybe you could speak to this. An architectural firm was like hired I don't know if it's Pioneer Valley or whatever, and they did like tremendous research and their descriptions. I mean, there's nothing that needs to be done on four or five or the one of the 15 that I've transcribed. There's a few that need like research. All the other ones all need architectural descriptions, you know, like a paragraph for each one, which I'm not equipped to do. Um, uh, but by the time we meet in August, I'll have all of them all 45 projects transcribed. And, and they, you're gonna need to, they took photographs of all the properties, but for some reason, when I try to um, paste them in, some of them come out sideways or they're big. And I also don't know how to um, put the maps in. So I'm gonna need some technical assistance with that. Um, but the main thing is maybe Betty can, when she gets back, she can do some of the historical research because. That's within her purview. Uh, I don't know if Bruce wants to, or maybe I'll, uh, there's another architect I know. We need someone to do probably about 30 architectural descriptions. And then in terms of like everything else, the boundaries, I think we should just use what the national, you know, what the uh, national registry or initial boundary, that's my opinion. Yeah. And the, re the significance, why, the historical part is already done, so this is pretty open and shut once we can fill in a few of the holes. Thank you for that tremendous amount of work, Steve. That's it actually sounds like it's more than it is. <laughs> it really well, does. It sounds like a lot. <laughs> yeah, I do one a day, it's not a big deal. Um, Nancy, if I may, yes, Bruce. Um, 
Steve, I'd prefer to hold on committing to doing uh, architectural descriptions of properties. I th I could probably help. It's not my strong point, I don't think, but uh, but it's also uh, following the last planning board meeting where we uh, board uh, voted uh, not to support a zoning amendment that we had been uh, spending the bulk or much of the previous five months on. The uh, the 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 quid pro quo uh, in getting a uh, a unanimous decision on that was that the board committed to um, let's just say a, an amount of work associated with understanding uh, how to uh, do a better job. Or uh, that's, no, that's dis that could sound disparaging. What I mean by a better job is that the 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 primary uh, objection to uh, what was proposed was that it. The goals were laud laudable, but the solution concepts weren't the best uh, in terms of achieving the goals. So the board, uh, and, and I want to put a lot of time and effort into this to honor this commitment, uh, is going to try and move uh, a greater clarity on, on uh, how to achieve the goals that the petitioners had uh, proposed were needed and so forth. So I can see that consuming a fair amount of my time. Um, and the fact that I'm going to be out of the country for five weeks. Yeah, there's uh, no rush on. Oh, I'm sorry, Nicole. Look so like at least for the next three yeah. um, months or so, I I'll, I would prefer to focus my uh, activities in in that area, the uh, the commitment to the planning board. So I'll I'll be available, but I don't want to commit to a, a, a some heavy lifting on that just yet. It's, there's no race, and what you know, uh, and I'll see. But there's another. I have a few more people I can also contact to see if they can do it because it's a lot of work to have one person do. Um, but anyway, uh, and hopefully Betty can do some of the historical stuff. Um, and maybe, Nate, can we get any money? I mean, um, yeah, it's, it's funny that Paul put it back here. We don't, I mean, the planning department usually allocates money for, you know, um, maybe committee member training or certain things, but not not this amount of money for to hire a consultant so you know the only thing i can think of is um there's administrative cpa money so you know it's not allocated to a category there's uh you know say a, a percent of the overall cpa funding that can be used for administrative purposes and this could be that if there's any available and so you know i, I can inquire with um yeah because if you do, staff, even if it's like three you know we pay them by the hour we can right. definitely get a graduate student that they um and Steve's out of Steve's in Europe too. Um, you know, I told him that in the past we contracted, we got CPA money, we contracted with a grad student. Uh, so it's, you know, we just don't, can't get the CPA money until next July. So, right. Um, uh, anyway, it's not a biggie. Just... And I did, uh, Steve sent me an email. He did ask about the document sharing, and the, the town clerk has said, and I have an email from the other week, that it, the documents really have to be available to everyone. Um, so the, you know, she's like, sure, you can use Dropbox as long as it's available to the public. Um, and I've, you know, I've looked at the way it works. I don't, I don't think it is, um, you know, they're essentially their private accounts and anyone with a link or something can view it, but it's not as if, you know, a member of the public could just happen to see it. And so the town clerk's office recommends setting up, you know, like a web page through the town's website and just putting all the documents right. there. I gotta say that means anyone. But does that mean anyone can go on it and change things? No. So it no. Ironically, um, I, I you know, it's it's the tough process would be you know, Steve, you'd have to get me the documents. I'd only I you know people could download them I guess, but they couldn't then re-upload them. So you know they're for viewing and downloading, but the only way that the changes can then be back uploaded would be to go through me. So, you know, if we could upload Word documents of every one of the inventory forms, different people can download them and work on them. And then the changes would have to come back to me to get uploaded again. Yeah, no, I have a sub, I have a file with a hundred files in it now. I have 45 photographs, you know, mm -hmm. 15 form Bs, sundry other things. What if I just did it um, individually with like Betty and, and somebody else, you know, to do the architectural stuff? This seems really. I have a hard time even getting to the site, you know, to our own page. You know, I'm just a luddite. 
if I did it directly with you know, like one person at a time, could, could I do it that way? Yeah, I mean, I, I think that's fine. It's not a subcommittee and it's really just information gathering. To me, it's not a discussion or deliberation on a, um, a topic. And so eventually when this becomes, say when we're actually discussing each property, you know, at some point we would, I would then have those, whatever we have available then become public, right? So if you okay. have draft forms for 20 properties, we can include those in a meeting packet and then that's the public packet, not not these, you know, random pictures that are, right, or right, you know, things that just aren't, aren't really, to me, it's not, to me, it's a, not a violation of open meeting law. Um, Nate, did you put the, the maps on last time? I can't remember who did it. Yeah, I, I started a web page on the local historic district commission one uh, that had East Amherst, I think, or, um, and so I had, I started putting some stuff up there, but it, I will say having like a, you know, um, a working document, this, the website is not very good at that, right? So it's not like a Dropbox where it's easy to yeah, download. Yeah, no, I just don't, upload. so this is something that, I'm sorry to put, uh, monopolize the discussion you guys. I mean, this is something new since seven years ago when we did it before, we're not being able to use Dropbox. Yeah, well, I think they, the concern is that there could be discussions happening through an online file system that isn't available to the public. And so not that it's necessarily a violation, but the it could be, right? That people could be commenting on these. Oh, it's such a pain because what if we had it, everyone used Dropbox, Bruce could just do like an architectural description at his leisure one at a time. And Betty could like, you know, that's what we did last time. Um, this just, there's gotta be a better way. Yeah, I mean, I yeah. was thinking about this. Um, I mean, Steve or someone could contact the state and ask for an opinion. So, you know, I was trying to search through the open meeting law determinations, but it's it's really hard <laughs> to find would something. I the, the Massachusetts Historical Commission, would that be who I would call? No, it'd be... Um... Steve, maybe one way to do this, I mean, you sometimes you ask a question, say, is Dropbox okay to be used for blah, blah, blah? Um, that's one way. The, the other way to ask the question is how could Dropbox be used uh, compliantly to achieve uh, mm -hmm. what you basically start off with the uh, with the assumption that you want to use Dropbox and, and that there would be qualified uh, um, conditions associated with its use. And then in the question, the answer would uh, would help you understand the qualified conditions. But of course, there may be there may be no qualifying conditions. In other words, it is, they'd say that might be these days outlawed. But uh, yeah, but it looks like yeah. You, which in the, which direction you go through the funnel, you know, it gets a more, it gets a differently satisfying answer. Yeah, just so you know, Bruce, last time the town had a Dropbox account, oh. um, it was what? through the town. They had a Dropbox account, and everybody in the committee could access that. Uh, I don't know if you ever used Dropbox. Um, it's like it's fantastic. And, oh, I, I use it all the yeah. time. It's, yeah. uh, I yeah. agree. I it's uh, it's I, I wouldn't I wouldn't be able to survive without it with Habitat with with with, with all of the things. Yeah, no, it just makes it really easy for everyone. If, uh, Nate, if you tell me who to call off, I'll be happy to call. Them. Yeah, I mean, so it's it's the attorney general's division. Um, it's the attorney general's division of open government, and the their email is open meeting at mass.gov. <laughs> okay. Um, can you? Uh, I can. I can send an email. I mean, yeah, I just send me an email. Yeah. And I'll, I'll call them tomorrow because it would yeah. just it would just make it so much easier for everyone involved. Right. No, I mean, it would I, make I, it yeah. easy. Make it so that everyone could be involved. Yes. I agree. Yeah. I mean, I think. Yeah. I think yeah. that. You know, I think the town clerk is just being. You know, is concerned. Like I said, that there could be somehow some discussions online. And I don't not, think you can yeah. have discussions on Dropbox. Uh, it's no. really, it's it, really, it's a, really yeah, like it'd a, be a clunky room. way to have discussions. Yeah, okay. it's a storeroom, yeah. and uh, every every person has their own door into that storeroom. So you you yeah. never in there with other people, so to speak. It's just a right. right. No, I, I yeah, I I think um yeah. Last time you know I had set up a Dropbox. It was actually <laughs> I set up an account myself and then shared it with people. Um, and it worked fine. I just, yeah, that's not the guidance we're being given now. I mean, so. does the I town, can, I'm sorry, go ahead. I'm sorry. Oh, no, no, Bruce had a question or? Yeah. No, I was just saying that I would support Steve's uh, um, tenacity in this. I think uh, 
it's the it's the it's it's the way that this world wants to work. I mean, this particular problem, and uh, and we where and 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 the and the town website wheel is a square wheel. I think, as it sounds like it, the way you described it, it would be much better if we uh, if there's this central box and we each have a door into it and we can go and come and see what other people are posting. But it doesn't. Uh, it won't allow us to deliberate. It'll simply allow us to share the data uh, for subsequent deliberation. Right. Yeah. I mean, I told the clerk's office that eventually that everything becomes public. The forms, the report, you know, images are uploaded onto the forms, but it just. Yes, that's true. But, 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 you know, for example, uh, I can go and have a conversation with Steve at Amos Coffee and then a little later in the day, Steve can have a conversation with Karen while I'm having a conversation with Nancy and and Nicole and Greta can talk on Fridays, uh, and so it, it, it's uh, it's in that category. I think it's just uh, it's 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 not uh, it's it's not it's not meeting. It's uh, it's just uh, uh, data sharing and 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 formulating our thinking. I would. I don't see why it would be a problem. But but you. Know, but Steve, you're. You, yeah, you're... No, I like to get an opinion from the. I just had another dealing with the town clerk, and she was overruled about something else. Um, uh, can we get the town attorney to like sign off on it? Well, that I think we. What's that? That costs money. To ask a question, I mean. Yep. Yeah. I. Probably a three hundred dollar price tag associated with making a fifteen. Well, I don't know. I mean, I'll pay for it. I don't even care. I mean, basically, it's, it will save six months of work. I mean, six months time to have it set up so you know people can just do what their what their skill yeah. set is. Yeah, but I, I don't uh, think that we. Yeah. You know, I would go through yeah. the town manager, and he'd probably say, you know, exhaust what you can first. So if the town clerk's saying no, then I think it's not. You know, I feel like a, someone on the commission would have to contact this. Um, Attorney General's office just to you know see if there's a different determination. And so okay, I, I've if tried to the information, I'll do it tomorrow. Yeah. I'll be yeah. happy to do it. Like I said, they post determinations online and I've been searching through them, but I can't find one that um matches this scenario. Yeah, no, the problem is nobody it. with since COVID, nobody worked in an office anymore. And it's like <laughs> you get the woman at the Massachusetts Historical Commission and literally have to leave three messages each time and then like anyway, it's fine. I'll be happy yeah. to do it. Yes. You give me the information. Yeah. You want a thoughtful answer because this kind of these kind of uh, inquiries often uh, invite sort of perfunctory answers from people who don't want to take the trouble to really understand what the benefits are, or what's driving the question. So we want a we want an answer from someone who's, if there is a problem, they know it is a problem and explain why and have heard us and why we want to do what Steve's arguing. Uh, which, as I say, and you say, Steve, it, it, uh, I don't see how it can violate uh, open meeting laws or any of the other constraints that we're bound by. And if it does, then tell us specifically how, and then we can, uh, can, we can organize uh, to avoid that specific aspect of the violation. Rather than just doing a blanket, no, that doesn't work. Let's I mean, just... otherwise it would come down to me like emailing you specifics, form B, and then you'll be sending it back to me. And then it was just so many ways you could get confused. And instead of having a, just a central repository for everyone. Yes, you know, besides we're bugging yeah. Nate, yeah. we don't do that. Yeah. I, I mean, I actually made that case to the town clerk that I don't want to be the one who has to then upload, you know, if someone shares something with me and then I upload it and then, you know, it's a, it's a lot of you know, redundancy. But perhaps we could explain to the town clerk that she would have to do all this uploading. Maybe that would have some. Uh, <laughs> well done. I mean, do you want me to? Do you want me to talk to Paul? No, I did, I sent you just sent you an email, Steve. I mean, I think it could be worth an email at least to the Open Meeting Law okay. Division and see if they okay. Have I got anything. it. Yeah. Okay, I'll call tomorrow and I'll report back to you, and then you can yeah. relay it to everyone. Yeah, I feel like I'm. I've been told this twice now, so I don't. I don't know how much I can keep. Is it Susan? Is she the town clerk? She is. Yeah. Okay. All right. I may contact her directly myself. If that's okay. Mm -hmm. um, Thank um, you, Steve. Yeah. So maybe maybe it helps if all of us talk to the town clerk and she explains it. No, 
<laughs> no, I, I think we I think we could have one person just ask. And I mean, I, I try to make it clear it was only through email and then on the phone. But like you're right, this is just a data sharing platform. It's not um, deliberation. It's really about facilitating completing inventory forms and a report that then become public. But you know. okay, I'll call. I'll deal with the state attorney's office with the information, and I'll see what they have to say. And hopefully, they'll sign off on it. And if mm -hmm. not, I'll contact Susan mm -hmm. and try to reason with her. Because it just makes like like Bruce just said, it's just it's just busy work for you. It's costing the town money. Yes, you know, this... you've got better things to do. Yeah. The 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 deliberation of the you know where we we take the data and think about it and construct propositions and so forth, that I understand is uh, something that has to be done publicly. But what uh, Steve's talking about is much more analogous to the just just me thinking about what I'm doing and uh, and the idea that I have to be have public scrutiny associated with the way I write a memo um, obviously is uh, is not the case so uh, I would say that data storage and uh, and and retrieval and access to data uh, that individual members of a committee become up to speed is uh, is, 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 is not a problem. And I know we use the town website for that uh, when we are getting data packets for these various meetings, but we could equally use... Uh, right. Uh, you know, as Nate knows, there's nothing deliberative about these forms. They're inventory forms. And at the bottom of each one, you have to have, there's a historical significance section. And then after that, I mean, before that, there's an architectural description. They're very straightforward. There's no opinion. There's no deliberations. And um, yeah, so it's just this is it's just kind of absurd. But anyway, we'll go through the through the process. Leave it to the extent, Steve, that it is opinion. Uh, it, yeah. It's your opinion or mine or Nancy's while we are uploading and downloading, and it only becomes our opinion once we start deliberation and look at what's written and decide that uh, we are yeah. happy with the statement uh, rather than whoever is the initial proposer. So it's all seems. Okay. Thoroughly kosher to me. Yeah. Okay. I'll I'll look Thank into you. it. And if anyone wants to do research or like, once I have all these forms up, um, they're extremely straightforward. They're kind of interesting. I mean, some of these properties, the Shumways owned a ton of these properties a hundred years ago. I mean, how long have there been Shumways in town? Do you how know, many maybe? Shumways have there been? <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's really interesting because. Um, you know, there's Kurt Shumway and then there's, you know, but he's mentioned that he's not related to other Shumways. And so it's, it could be that there, there's some Shumways now that are not related, you know, the, some of the Shumways that you're seeing, Steve, are not the same family. Really? But yeah. And I, not enough that they're not obviously connected, but. Right, right. Yeah. I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm a guessing they would be, but it's just ironic to me that you could have a, a Shumway family in Amherst that isn't the same, but. I mean, I don't see any Shumway before 1900, but there's a ton of Shumway properties around yeah. 1900. So, right. yeah. Okay. Uh, anything else about East Amherst as a potential historic district that, that we want to discuss? I'm good. We have a way forward. Good. Let's move to a discussion of amending the bylaw to include the review of parking lots. This is something that Steve brought up and it seems really important. Uh, this Nate, Nate is the one that was pursuing it, so I have nothing to report on it. Yeah, it's it's really interesting. I post I I I've talked to Rob Mora a few times about this, the building commissioner. And so I I think I sent something with some language. I did post it on the mass preservation listserv and um, you know, I've had a, I don't know, maybe like a half dozen to eight or nine responses and it's a little nuanced, right? So a local historic district's not supposed to regulate use. It's only, you know, supposed to regulate structures or buildings. And so some communities are saying, oh, well, you can't regulate parking. And I'm like, well, it's the parking area. It's the pavement. It's not parking, the use of parking. So I think we have to be clear on that, but, um, you know, what's interesting is that, um, Charles Sullivan from the Massachusetts Historical Commission said, well, you can regulate parking now the way your bylaw is written. And I think it's just that our bylaw is silent. It doesn't, it doesn't say it right. So it, it describes a structure as something other than a building, including 
you know, and then it says things like walkways, driveways, you know, and it, do, it doesn't say parking, but it says that. Um, and then further on, it, it, as an, in an exemption, it lists things that are at grade, like a terrace driveway and walkway are exempt from review. So the, you know, there it's saying like, okay, well, all these things are exempt, but it doesn't, again, it doesn't, there's no mention of parking or parking area. And so what, you know, what Rob and I were saying is, do we, um, I'll pull up in a second, do we define parking, a parking area or parking lot as a term? And then we don't, we just, then we just don't exempt it. Um, and so I think it's possible. It's just, you know, we have to, um, you know, I, I think we just have to come up with some criteria. So, you know, what we were saying is if parking becomes a defined term, if this is, am I sharing my screen? Oh, I guess I'm not sharing my screen, sorry. <laughs> you want to uh, show the, uh, oh, there we go, yes. Yeah, sorry, yeah, I thought, I, for some reason, I thought I had been sharing it. Um, you know, we're saying we could define a parking area, you know. Oh, see, that's in there, so you're, your, your, the reason for the arrow is just where it will fit in the definition structure. Right. We could say, you know, something like a parking area is an improved impervious surface within the property designed to accommodate a total of five or more parking spaces. You know, we could say like, it could also say like something like a number of square feet of pavement or impervious surface. Um, Why it works because uh, it's, uh, it's more than a duplex. Right. And so, you know, so what we have here is we, the current definition says a structure is a combination of materials other than a building, including a sign, fence, walk, or wall, terrace, walk, or driveway. And so, you know, some communities have said, well, this also includes parking. I'm like, I know, but it's just not explicitly mentioned. And then the issue is, sorry for the scrolling, um, in the exemptions, or exclusions, we say that terraces, walks, driveways, sidewalks, similar structures, substantially at grade are exempt. And so then essentially it's also implying that parking is exempt. And so, um, you know, Newton is the only place that regulates parking, but what they do is, um, oh, do I have it up? They, I'll, um, I'll share it in a minute. They, they regulate the material of the parking. And so what they found is in their local historic districts, they have four that people, you know, were taking out cobblestone or brick and they're paving them. And so they actually, they regulate the location, they push it to the back of the property. And then if it's in the front or on the side, they'd like to see something that is historic. So like a, a brick pattern or something not, you know, that, um, but, um, you know, anyway, so Springfield said, oh, well, maybe you regulate it by defining it and you have certain terms and then, you know, so anyway, there's some ideas, but I think it's a, I think it's possible. I think we just want to be careful because local historic district is not supposed to be about use. It's more about, you know, the structure. And so essentially we'd be regulating the parking area itself in terms of like, you know, how visible is the parking lot or space from the street, um, you know, and we also don't want to get into the situation. I'm defining a parking space because then there's a drive aisle, you know, is it, a driveway, so you know, a pro, you know, a single-family home all of a sudden repaves their driveway. Do you know? There's no permit. There's nothing, nothing associated with that. Do how do we do we want to review that? So really, it's about if there's a parking, you know, a parking lot or a parking area. So, anyways, that's kind of where we, Rob and I, have landed, and it seems like it could work. Thanks. That's a lot of work. Thank you so much. Yeah. Uh, Karen. Yeah, I think I think it's really important to move in that direction because the whole uh, ambiance of a historic district is deter is is ruined if you start asphalting a lot of the the green spaces. So I like what you said that Newton does that they that they uh, try to push it to the back and then if it's not possible then to to really talk about the material. Because we, we're, I mean, we're charged with kind of saving the, the whole ambiance of the, not just the, the structural, but the ambiance that goes with it. So uh, I like this idea. And I think I like your proposals of that this, it's about the structure. It is really about the structure, not parking as 
per se. Uh, Bruce. Um, I think uh, this is good. Uh, I, I, uh, I think the, where this, I think, came from was when we were presented with that uh, uh, cluster of four duplexes or there, the equivalent thereof on a single property in Fearing Street. And there was one huge paved area in the middle that was having something like 30 cars. So the I think if we handle it the way Nate's talking here, and I would say perhaps exactly the way, I'm not sure about that lower box about right. reviewing where your parking involves additional units. It may or may not, but uh, but but beyond that, I think uh, uh, all of this is uh, is something we really should do. And then having inserted parking areas uh, and made sure they're not exempt and so forth, then we can apply that part of the bylaw that. Uh, it re re refers to consistency of scale uh, because the thing that was so out uh, of kilter with that uh, proposal uh, was the was the scale of the uh, parking area. In, historically, there would no one would ever have uh, aggregated carriages or whatever you might have thought were the uh, the vehicles of the day. They wouldn't be. Uh, put together at that scale. So I think it's quite reasonable to say that the parking areas when you've got uh when when they become a scale have to be when you've got lots of cars that you need to accommodate have to satisfy that aspect of historical appropriateness that they are appropriately scaled with uh, the way carriages and vehicles have handled other elsewhere in the neighborhood and this this would allow us to apply that uh, existing aspect of our bylaw to parking areas along with everything else so nate i think this is very good it seems to me to be uh, uh be um, ready for prime time uh, nicole um, yeah, that, thank you for bringing up the term scale, Bruce, because that's what I wasn't seeing covered here, but it seems like it's covered somewhere else. And then secondly, my only um, hesitation that I think will come out as it did, whether it was Faring Street or whatever the other property was, um, was the fact that all that parking was in the back. <laughs> but all the neighbors were bringing up the fact that that's our backyard. That's what we're seeing. So, you know, I mean, that's where it's kind of um, good that it comes to committee, but it, it just can't be shadowed under as long as it's in the back, it's, it's okay. Cause um, that's, that was what they were doing and it was really, really hurting the neighborhood still. Um, but as long as we've got the scale covered somewhere else, that's what I was um, worried about. Yeah, thank you for raising that. Karin. No, I, I'm sorry, my hand's still up. I, I agree with Nicole. Thank you. Yeah, so I, I was going to say, I'll, I will, um, you know, it's, I'll, I'll try to I'll compile all the responses, what I've received from the listserv, and I'll send them to members. I mean, it is interesting. Newton doesn't really define parking, even though they regulate it. And so I think, you know, Rob Moore and I feel like we the bylaw um, works. I think defining it makes it a little stronger. So then the, you know, um, it can be clearer. The, um, uh, you know, that what's ironic is um, someone might try to hide parking by putting in a fence, but then that's regulated as well. So then they could say it's not visible. So, you know, Rob and I were trying to just talk about what kind of different scenarios would this, to, you know, what, what will we see from this? And so, I think for the commission, I'll send you what we have and we can look at this for next time. You know, I, I think um, I'll send you some examples. So when we do rental permitting, we have a parking plan. And so people will show how many parking spaces they have on a property. And so I'll, I'll pull a few of those. And so I think, you know, to me, the um, I think what's, a, what's important to consider is what really is the defined area? What is the parking area? Is it a number of parking spaces? Is it a square? feet of impervious surface. And so, you know, oftentimes homes might have a pretty big driveway. 
and then somewhere off the driveway they might have a turnaround but then is that any is that is that a parking area at all or is that just part of the driveway and when does it become the parking area so like i'll just you know for instance um sorry for the scrolling but up on mcclure street or um not on mcclure on lincoln you know for instance uh 328 lincoln you know there's some parking in the back so you know right now you could have a long driveway and then some parking back here but the way i'm trying to define it is that this driveway isn't part of the parking area it's where the cars are all parked so you know if they have a parking back here that becomes the parking area right so if they have five or more car parking area for five more cars that becomes regulated it's not not the driveway so anyways i think those are or it, actually across the street here right so for instance like to me this is the parking area um so i you know i just that's something we can we could talk about now too i just i'm trying to find a right way to to define it so we're not you know we one is a, i don't want to necessarily have to review every time a driveway changes or there's a little change in paving and then what is kind of the right scale or right what's the right threshold to start regulating yeah um, i i agree again with using scale or ratios because if we just put in square footage um the same square footage is going to have a different impact on one acre versus 0.1 acre Mm -hmm. um you know so it's so it's how much of their entire property is becoming driveway and or parking that's more of a concern to me than um whether or not you know they're adding to their driveway well thank you nate this is very helpful bruce um I just wanted to read the section of the bylaw. This is the uh, bylaw, not the rules and regulations. And under criteria for determinations, uh, uh, number two, it says, in the case of new construction or additions to existing buildings or structures, uh, the commission shall consider the appropriateness of the scale, shape, and proportions of the building or structure in both relation to the land area upon which the building or the structure is situated and structures in the vicinity. So that's the reference to scale that's already in the bylaw that would allow us that that at the addition of parking would we would be allowed to uh, um, apply that uh, criterion uh, to our deliberation. And also the next further down, it says the commission may in appropriate cases impose dimensional and setback requirements in addition to those required by applicable statute or bylaw. So it could be that there's also then some setbacks that the commission, I mean, that goes back to the scale and vicinity, but. Yeah. I just wanted to follow up on what Nicole uh, mm -hmm. concerned yeah. as well, just so I was, I wanted to make sure I was remembering it correctly. Okay. Right. Yeah. So, I mean, right. We're really trying to figure out what is a definition and then, you know, if we have a definition in there and we can then say it's not part of those exclusions, then it's regulated. We just, I just want to make sure we have a good definition. And it seems like it's, you know, Rob seems pretty comfortable with it, Mora, that it can be done. Um, right. I mean, we need to make it explicit because it's going to come up. Right. Yeah. So, you know, I'll forward you this, but the city of Springfield, um, <clears throat> whoever responded to me, where he had, you know, they'd said, I mean, granted, you know, this is in Springfield, but he was saying, could you define it as, um, structures related to parking that would include pavement signage or barriers such as chain link fence fencing con or concrete and then hit some other things I'll send it all along I'll, like I said I'll compile it but you know it's interesting that um, we can regulate fences independent from parking so then we have that covered but you know we, we've never been comfortable doing just parking so well, that property on fearing, that proposal on fearing certainly uh, rattled a lot of cages. Uh, uh, so th the next step is? Uh, I think at the next, well, I'll, I'll send some information. I'll probably do one or two different definition or drafts. And I think the next step would be to have the commission, um, you know, figure out a final, you know, say something that we we like, and then um, I guess we just we have to see what's the best order to move that forward. Is it a? I guess it's a pe petition to change the general bylaw. I mean, I don't. Is that done by a vote of the commission? The commission would 
vote to recommend it, but then it becomes a council. Okay. You know, it'd have to go to council and they'd refer to um, maybe CRC and GOL, but it would be, you know, the commission could sponsor that change. Karen, do you have something to say? Yeah, this is tricky. I can't remember if this was the our commission or the planning board. Remember we had to review that house, was it on Spalding, where the neighbors insisted there was enough parking for the renters, and yet what they were planning on doing was gonna just pave over the whole backyard and none of us liked that. So it is going to be tricky because if they have a certain amount of people living in the house, they are mandated to provide a certain amount of parking places and then you are in trouble. So it, it's gonna be, it, it's gonna affect a lot of things. I think it was the planning board, because I remember Janet McGowan had some opinion on that, so that must have meant it was the other board, uh, right. but, but nonetheless. Yeah, I mean, no, I, I agree. So I think, you know, local historic district is def different than zoning, and so I think there are different purposes, and it could be that there's some inconsistent, um, you know, decisions, but I think usually we, the boards can, you know, or we can figure that out, but I think if, for instance, an application is coming to the local historic district and there's a lot of parking, you know, 20 or 30 or some 40 parking spaces on a residential property. I think it'd be very well within the commission's purview, even now to say that's too, you know, it it's impactful and no, and you could say no, or you could say that, you know, you 10 spaces. <laughs> <laughs> and the ZBA might say something different and then that becomes something the applicant has to figure, you know, has to resolve. I mean, staff can work with them, but, um, I mean, I, I do think that, you know, we have zoning, we have lot coverage in our zoning and, but what we haven't seen is in a lot of cases, someone really maximizing lot coverage. So, you know, typically someone might say, oh, we, you know, even though I can go up to 50% or 60%, I, in most places are probably like 10 or 15%. And maybe with the market, the way it is, the housing market, people are going to start trying to redevelop their property and really push those coverages. And so then, that, then the town has, you know, maybe that then our zoning has to change too, right? Just because we haven't, we haven't, we've never been, you know, kind of had so many requests to get up to that maximum. And so if we're seeing that more, then it's something we could consider as well. Is there any further discussion of this issue? Uh, well, thank you, Nate, yeah. for uh, all your work on this. I think this is moving in exactly the right direction. Uh, and we look forward to seeing what you come up with next. Uh, yeah, that, I hope to, I, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, are there unanticipated items to discuss? I have a quick question, which is that the property on Fearing was advertised by the real estate agent suggesting that those buildings and things could be done. And I don't know if the local historic district, it would be in our interest to, I know we give out the brochures to the real estate agents, but um, let them know that it's not quite as easy. They have to go through the local historic district. But I just thought it was amazing that the real estate agent would advertise that way. This is the one, this is, the, the one that had come before us, not it's not a current listing, right? It's no, 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 it came before us. Yeah. Hmm. Anyway, just an interesting point. No, I think that's a great idea. And I know that um, Dorothy Pam was going to talk to Jackie, who is the real estate agent, about that. She yeah. never got a reply, is what I heard. Oh, was that what but happened? She, yeah. yeah. So, and I, I don't know, I just think it's too bad that the real estate agents for our neighborhood would put that out there as, this is a great idea. It said location, location, location. Yeah. Yes, yeah. Not everybody thinks very clearly about things. Yeah, we don't, yeah, I mean, we, you know, if someone calls us, oftentimes realtors or even, you know, pr prospective buyers or even sellers sometimes may call and we'll, you know, we'll provide the information. So, but we, you know, we don't track or monitor what listings are coming up, right? So we don't, if, we don't know that, you know, the Sun property is going to be listed next week and we'll provide them information. So it's really, you know, we only, the town would respond unless, you know, until we're asked. So sometimes we don't even, you know, we're not privy to any more information than what the public sees, but 
yeah, no, I mean, that, that does happen. Um, you know, it's not but just. Maybe, maybe it's good to be a little bit more proactive for our uh, co historical commission and, and just put a note out to the uh, realtors in general saying, um, just remind your, uh, your buyers that they have to get approval from in this particular, I don't know, this might go over badly, but I think it, it's worth doing a reminder like that. Well, at one point we gave them our brochure mm -hmm. that they, when they have an open house. What do you think? Pardon, I'm sorry, I didn't hear you, Bruce. I just asked Nicole what she thought because that's her right. place. Yeah, Nicole. yeah. So, so what obviously the first part that I would really want to do is if like, from my perspective, like on the MLS and you, this isn't what you see on Zillow, like you don't see the disclosures mm -hmm. and you don't see the firm remarks that only realtors can see, not even my clients can see the firm remarks. So um, it would be kind of me on the MLS checking to see if they have notified other realtors that this house is in the local historic district. And, and that's all the further the realtors, I feel even the realtors obligation or legal obligation is to say, it's, you know, this is in the local historic district. This is, Massachusetts is a buyer beware state. So everything is on the buyer, not the seller. Okay. So, so basically like if the listing agent needs to disclose what they've got, right? They, you know, and and I would like, either me, Nate, or, you know, whatever, like send an email saying, just so you know, you, you should be sharing that this is in the local historic district because now they're privy of that information um, if it's not already in that MLS. So then it's kind of like they could be saying whatever they want to say of improvements that could happen to the house just because they've got great ideas. But as long as we've got it noted, this is part of the local historic district. We've done the buyer a service of, and hopefully they've got a good buyer's agent of knowing, oops, anything we do, like let's double check what has to happen. So like, I think that's where it needs to be caught. Like, like we can let them go and say whatever they want to say. That's kind of like marketing, whether it's false marketing or, you know, whatever else. But as long as they're also disclosing that it is in this local historic district commission, they are providing the information that I might say this, but of course it needs to be approved. Nicole, I had a question. Sometimes we do solicit, you know, members from the Pioneer Valley Realtors Association. I mean, would it be worth trying to contact them again and saying, oh, like in Amherst, is there a way to, you know, um, make sure that these properties are noted? I mean, is there, you know, is, is there a follow-up that I could do, you think? Um, so, so you solicited people that lived in Amherst to be on this commission. Right. It's not the same as say going out to the, but. Right. I mean, like there can be, there has been like a listing agent from Boston. Right. Listing the property that we might not even catch in the Pioneer Valley, um, mm -hmm. Realtor Association. There's not very often, but you know, it, it can, it can happen. It's not a total safeguard. Um, and really like realtors have, whether diagnosed or not diagnosed, like the most AT, ADHD, like it's, uh, you, they get a little bit of information and like it's gone by the time they're actually listing the property. So it really is like catching at that listing. You know, I mean, it's like right then and there, I'm looking to see if they put it in the MLS. If they didn't, I like we want to put it in writing so that it was like a formal disclosure that can be held accountable. Because, I mean, we have an ethics committee, mm -hmm. you know, um, we get sued just like everybody else. So, you know, I mean, it's like that's where I would really want it to be in writing of just informing this property is on that district. Mm -hmm. Um we recommend that to be, you know, disclosed to the buyers and put in the MLS if it's not already. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Nicole. That's really good answer. Yeah, I was gonna say too, I mean, it's not just local historic districts. I mean, we get it from, you know, someone's listing a property in South Amherst and they say you can do this or this and then, you know, 
a prospective buyer is like, oh, I, I'm, I, I'm, I, I can go do this. And you're like, well, actually, <laughs> right. maybe, maybe, I mean, but you're gonna have to, you might need some special permits or you might have to go to the conservation commission. It's not a, you know, we can't say no necessarily, but it's not, um, so yeah, no. But yeah, I, it comes up with wetlands right. all the time, right? Like that, right. that sellers don't even know about sometimes, you know, uh -huh. and right. buyers get ideas to build certain things or whatever else. Yeah. Right. As wetlands shift, yeah. yes, we right. Thought was through five years ago changes, and people don't remember or think of that. So, unless just, just yesterday, the they don't. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Right. I think the wetlands were shifting yesterday in our neighborhood. <laughs> uh, okay, so um, do we have public comment? Is there anyone from the public still here? Uh, Hilda Greenbaum's here. That's the only attendee right now. Hello, Hilda. <laughs> Hilda, I think, is paying attention for the Indy. And, uh, and we and we said the next meeting and it will be a continued hearing was, I just want to confirm, August 21st at 3 p.m. That's right. So yep. we've set the next meeting date. Mm -hmm. um, anything else that anyone would like to discuss? Then do we have a motion to adjourn? We do. Thank you, Bruce. Second? <laughs> Second. Second. <laughs> Several seconds. Okay. Uh, all in favor? <laughs> I'll vote by clicking Aye. the red button. <laughs> you all. Have a great summer, everyone. Have a great month. Thanks. Thanks. Bye, you. everyone. Yeah. Okay. Thank you, everyone, for all your work. Bye -bye. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Bye.